Hi, my name is Julia Neftas and I am part of the ADS Network. My PhD thesis is called Impact of Interim Decisions of Data and Safety Monitoring Boards and in this video I would like to present one of my research projects which concerns interim analysis incorporating short and long-term binary endpoints. This research focuses on a later stage of drug development in which the toxicity and the dose of the drug have been already established. So we have some potential treatment that we would like to compare to some standard of care or placebo and hopefully claim that it outperforms it. So the treatments are evaluated in patients that are randomized to either experimental or controlled treatment arms. Usually patients are recruited in a trial and observed for some pre-specified time. This can be shown in a patient recruitment plot and mostly they do not enter the trial at the same time. So if for example we need a one year long observation on a patient in order to evaluate the effect of the treatment, the time after observations on all patients are completed will be much longer than that one year. And as the process is quite lengthy, often there is an interest to evaluate the results before the trial finishes and after some fraction of patients has the observations complete. In such a case, an interim analysis is performed in order to assess the results. So what can be done during such an analysis? First of all, the trial can be stopped early. And if, for example, the effects of the experimental treatment are outstanding, the trial can be stopped and we can claim efficacy of the medicine with less patients than anticipated. On the other hand, if the results do not look promising or if there are some serious adverse events, the trial can be terminated due to futility without exposing any additional patients to unsafe treatments. What is more, some adaptations to the trial design can be performed. One of them is sample size reassessment, where the number of patients to be recruited in the trial can be changed. This number can be either decreased or increased. And why should an interim analysis be performed? Most importantly, because of ethical reasons. If there is a treatment that works fantastically and can be released to wide use faster, then why not do that? On the other hand, if there is an experimental treatment that turns out not to help or even harm patients, the trial should be discontinued as soon as possible in order not to put any more patients at risk. This also correlates with economic reasons for stopping the trial, because clinical trials are very expensive and investing money into futile treatments would simply just add costs that would result in no returns. So in our project, we considered a clinical trial design with an interim analysis where some additional short-term information is incorporated. So let us come back to the patient recruitment plot. The primary outcome in a trial, say L, is an observation on a patient that lasts for, for example, one year. At the time of interim, we have some patients with such completed observations available. Now, let's say that also an outcome on a shorter amount of time is also recorded in the trial, say after six months. And such outcome is in some way correlated with the primary long-term one. We can see on the recruitment plot that substantial amount of information could be gained at the time of interim and improve the decision-making process. In our project, at first we considered a scenario with a trial being only stopped for futility meaning that it was discontinued whenever the results observed this far had a very low chance to show a success at the end of the trial. As there is no free lunch, trials with interim analysis result in a lower power, which is the probability to decide that the drug works when it does indeed work. We investigated different correlations between short and long-term outcomes, as well as different timings of the interim analysis. We showed that the larger the correlation and the difference between long and short-term data, the more we can gain in terms of power. The approach that we used was shown to be robust and in cases when the short-term observations did not predict the long-term outcome very well, we did not lose much in terms of power, and when it was the opposite, we could gain power when compared to using long-term data only. We further extended our approach to clinical trials with design adaptations, more precisely to sample size reassessment. So as before, at first we performed an interim analysis, and if the chance to claim efficacy on the treatment at the end of the trial was low, the trial was stopped for futility, and otherwise it was continued and sample size reassessment was performed. Thanks to sample size reassessment, the number of patients recruited in the trial can be adapted. If the results are very good, implying that we can claim efficacy on the treatment with a smaller number of patients, the sample size can be reduced. On the other hand, there could be the case that the results show some effect in the experimental treatment, however, the current pre-specified amount of patients in the trial would not be sufficient to claim efficacy, so that the sample size can be adjusted and more patients can be recruited in the trial. 
In our research, we showed that using both short and long-term observations could increase power of the trial at the cost of an increased sample size, which in some cases would be desirable, for example, when the results are not as great as expected, but still promising. And that again, using both observations is more robust than using simply short-term data, and therefore is recommended for interim analysis. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed my video.